my goodness, we're back. Jay Booksbaum and... Gabe Gatter. Well, we're at the Kedem Winery Tasting Room in upstate New York, Marlboro yeah. to be precise. Well, you picked everything today, so and if it goes <laughs> bad, you can blame it on Gabe, you know? No, really, he's, he's great, so... You can blame me. <laughs> I'm here for that. What are we tasting? <laughs> okay, so we have some great wines and great cheese. Uh, you know, Schwurz, dairy dishes, cheese, you know, that's a, that's a minhag, it's a custom that uh, many, if not most people have. So we have four wines, as you can see. The Herzog Lineage Chardonnay. Let's repeat that again. Lineage. Yeah, very good. I go. learned it. Yeah, right. Took me three months. <laughs> so Herzog Lineage Chardonnay. Okay. Uh, it's part of the, of the brand new Lineage uh, series from uh, Herzog Wine Cellars. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic wines, below $20 retail. Let's go. Oh my goodness. You know what's interesting about mm. this wine? It's, it's clearly Chardonnay character, but what's great about it is you also get that malolactic, you know, creaminess that yep. comes out. And uh, wines at this price rarely go through malolactic fermentation, which is a secondary fermentation, partially in the barrel. So you get, you know, good aromas, good viscosity. So it's got to be with a little bit of a fatter cheese. Yep. So what do you got it going with? So something fattier and creamy. A camembert uh, from France, Grand Terroir, it's called. And you know, it's got this rind on it. Thank you, know, you this, cracker. And, and this rind really should be eaten with the cheese. I know it looks like it shouldn't, but it should. So, you got some? A little bit. Mmm. Delicious. All right. Make sure. Just like I always tell you to kind of involve your entire tongue with the wine, do the same thing with the cheese. So you can really get the full flavor, texture. Mm. Wow, what a good mm. combination. Especially, you know, also that little bit of sweetness that's coming off of the biscotti and the almond biscotti also kicks in a little bit of that richness yep. with the wine as well. It's delicious. And it's got those, the, the one has that creaminess that the cheese has too. Uh, but it's got also very good acidity to cut through uh, the fattiness of the cheese, mm. which is very important. And also in body, this is pretty much a and medium you know, to full flavor cheese, and same with the wine. So it comes from a state vineyards. Absolutely. So they control everything, not only from when they get the grapes in, but even from when they start growing the grapes. Yeah, and you know very what? Very impressive. You know what? All the wines we have here are estate wines. Let's go with the Terra de Seta Chianti Classico Reserva 2012, 93 now, wine spectator. Now, there's a very interesting thing you're doing. You're skipping from and going from white to red, even though we have other whites in between. Yes, I started with the dry white, uh, then I went to the dry red, but then the other whites that we have are sweet. So uh, I think that this is the proper order to go, uh, to go with in this case. Chianti Classico is made from Sangiovese most of the time. Sometimes there are blends, this but the, the main grape is Sangiovese. Sangiovese. Yes, it's 100% Sangiovese, that's correct. Uh, so you're looking for uh, aromas of cherries, sour red cherries. Uh, there is a bit of uh, earth uh, from the terroir. Some spiciness to it also. A little finish. rinse. And we're eating it with what? Viney sheep. It's a, so it's a sheep. Viney sheep, okay. Yeah. It's a sheep milk uh, cheese, aged in red wine. And Chal of Israel too. And it's Chal of Israel too. Just so everybody knows, in another life I used to be in the cheese business. A long time ago. I don't want to tell you how long because that will age me. <laughs> but what's interesting about this is it's firm, yet when you, when you, you know, kind of put it in your mouth, it does kind of soften up mm -hmm. on the palate. And it's, ooh. A little more robust than the last one. That kind of that creamy, smooth, you know, you had the kick of the rind on the camembert, but this you don't have that, but still, it still has robustness to it. Sure. It was aged in Italian wine, uh, Italian red wine. Uh, it's giving the, the, the cheese a very deep, rich flavor, mm. very interesting uh, aromas, and goes perfectly with this. Wow, wow, what a nose. OMG. What a nose. And this is Oregon nose. 
This is a Mucca Gewurztrum. Now, Mucca refers to a single vineyard, correct? Correct. And it's 100%, um, I believe it's 100% Gewurztraminer. It's 100% Gewurztraminer. Has this spent any time in oak? No, no. 100% so stainless, stainless steel. steel so, it, so you would expect it to be fresh and lively, mm -hmm. right, on the palate and kind of jump around. And what are we putting this with? What Here, kind of have cheese? some cheese. Authentic, again, Italian cheese actually. Authentic Parmigiano Reggiano. Now, just like wine with cheese, mm, smell it because your olfactory senses are actually, some people say, as much as 75% of your taste, not the other way around. Your mouth should be 70, no. It's really your nose that does most of the tasting. Oh, the smell mm. on this is great. Mm. Also crumbly, a little firm in texture. Crumbly, it's age also. So you know, these cheeses, wine and cheese have so much in common. They come from different countries, different terroir, characteristics, uh, traditions in, uh, in the making of them. Uh, the, the terroir is very important. The, 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 the way it's being made uh, gives a completely different uh, characteristic. Even at the, at, at the end of the day, it's, it, it all comes from fermented milk. Just like wine always comes from mm -hmm. fermented grapes. Uh, what but grape wine does. But you know, I, just a, a heads up and a, a consumer alert, keep in mind, and, and again, ask your local rabbi, what cheese is considered hard cheeses for the purpose of waiting between milk and meat, in this case. This is really a classic uh, Gewurztraminer. We have those aromas of lychee, uh, rose water, uh, peach. Oregon, uh, what's the, do you, do you remember the approximate retail? Uh, yes, I think it's around, uh, it's around twenty dollars also, between twenty to twenty-five, if I'm not mistaken. So moving on to the Herzog Late Harvest uh, Chenin Blanc. So Herzog have a great lineup of dessert wines, the Late Harvest series. There's uh, the Chenin Blanc, the White Riesling, uh, the Orange Muscat, and the uh, Zinfandel. Sweet wines uh, doesn't mean that a sweet wine is uh, is a cheap or uh, unsophisticated wine, uh, quite the opposite thing. But I will tell you everybody, just so that you know, what a late harvest simply means that they allow the grapes to over ripen. There's less water inside the grape itself. They shrivel up a little bit. The amount of sugar at harvest is much higher. And as a result, the amount of sugar that they allow to remain in solution after it's been fermented completely to about 12 or 13%, is still a residual natural sugar from the grape itself, and that's how you end up with this late harvest sweetness. Yeah. And what are we tasting it with? Okay, blue cheese. Mm. Take a look, I don't know if you can see this, get a real close up if you can. There's green mold growing on this blue cheese. What's interesting about that, by the way, is, is that some of the sauternes, their grapes have mold growing on them. I was as well. about to say that. Yeah, so this mold is actually an edible mold. Um, in fact, most molds may be edible, but certainly this one is meant to be eaten, and it gives it a, a kind of bitter, wonderful flavor that goes with the creaminess that is in the rest of the white part of the cheese. Very aromatic, or I should say in a positive way, in, in cheese terms, very stinky and quite wonderful. Yeah, so, wonderful but, but the fun. reason why you chose this is because because it's so rich a wine that you need like a really flavorful, rich counterpart to go with it, and this cheese is that rich, flavorful counterpart to go with it. That's true, and so the, the bitterness and the funk that we talked about, and it's also quite salty uh, uh, cheese, uh, can be balanced out very nicely by a sweet dessert wine. Mm. So they, they really go great together. It's really uh, it's really delicious. Mm. And when I said that these are dessert wines, it doesn't mean that you must have them only with dessert. I would suggest, by the way, that when, if you get these dessert wines or sweet dessert wines, chill them extremely well because the flavor still will pop because of the sweetness. The aromatics will still come out. Chill them extremely well. It should be served right out of the refrigerator. On the other hand, <clears throat> Baron, the Herzog lineage, uh, should also be served cold, but not ice cold. You know, you have to let that, those aromatics of the oak and the vanilla and, uh, you know, the flavor of the Chardonnay and the aromatics of the Chardonnay to arise. And that's a little bit better at, 
at cool, cold temperatures, but not ice cold. So thank you for listening. And again, uh, there's tons of other wines to enjoy with your meals this Schwuis. It was a pleasure to uh, share Lechaim. and pair those wines uh, with cheese and with you. Lechaim. Lechaim.